G'day everyone, Simon from Heavy Mag here. Um, I have the pleasure and the honour to talk to two of the members of one of Victoria's and one of Australia's finest, Abreact. We have Lee, better known as Chad, and Josh. How the fuck are we, gents? Maximum control. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. So, let's get into it. Um... It's been nearly two weeks since uh, Deceivers Are Coming came out, which I've, I I double checked, and I can't believe it's almost been two weeks. Um, how's the how you know standing question? How's the reception been amongst the peers? It's been warm. It, it's actually been I don't know humbling. Yeah. Best way to put it. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, I just big props from everyone and. It's just, it's so nice to finally get it out there and the reception that's coming back is just fucking amazing. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. And on, and on that, um, I was going to leave this, and this bit of a leading question. So, the finally getting it out part. Tell us a little bit more about that because uh, I hear it was quite the process. Well, yeah, we did, we did start it before COVID. Uh, did a thing and... Um, so yeah, that's why it's been a bit of a process. Uh, so when we put out Paper Planes in uh, September, two years ago, 2020, yeah, um, we did that because that was the only song that was finished. Yeah. Um, and we worked on it first because we knew it was potential to, to be a single anyway. But that was that had started... Um, I recorded all the drums in Bendigo, but the rest of it was done... Um, with Bo McKee, Studio Delos in uh, Selby, and we did the vocals and the guitars. Um, I think it was oh, June, mm. and um, when there was a slight window opened up where we could finish and stuff. <laughs> and, um, Lift and, the steel ring. Yeah, and then uh, everything <laughs> got locked down again, and we just, um, and at that point was whenever there was went full hard mm. lockdown and there was no uh, yeah there was no end in sight at that point yeah. there was no predictions it was just a whatever so we thought uh, well we better just put this song out because like no one's got any, any idea mm. really, I mean, the, no one's got any idea what's actually going to happen so we didn't even know if we'd, we'd get back to the studio because you know if you listen to the news, you know the world was going to end. Kiss Flash. Yeah. Penguin fucking monsters, all that stuff. So, um, so, so, so yeah, we just thought, well, we'll put that, we'll put that track out and see what happens. So we didn't get back in the studio until January after that. Fuck. Um, and that's when we worked on... Uh, Trust in Decay Part 2 and Honesty. Mm. Mm. So, the problem was with having to, the studio, the studio was kept getting um, Stage 4 lockdown in Metro. So, like, even if we had slightly wider predictions in the, uh, restrictions, sorry, predictions. Uh, <laughs> Lyrics! <laughs> in the country, um, we still couldn't go there because mm. he wasn't allowed to be open. But the, and the problem with that is, like, he was booked out six months in advance. So every time he had to shut and then reopen, there was a whole stack of people that had to be booked in first. Yeah, right. Which just, you know, made... I mean, he was obviously pulling his hair out because it's how he makes a living. Mm. <laughs> but, uh, and, you know, we got a We were very frustrated, but we had to, you know, temper that with, you know people who'd lost their jobs that we know and people who got very sick so you can't be too too upset because all the rest of us were still all of us were still working during that time like yeah and it was easier for us to support our families and a lot of other people so you can't be too too bitter about the whole thing but um yeah keep your feet on the ground but at the same time it sucks yeah so that's that's why it was a process every time we had the rebook sessions it was just you know Eight million people in front of us. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Well, um, having recently visited Victoria, um, for everyone in Queensland um, who experienced a lockdown, uh, we didn't. Uh, Victoria did it 
real, real tough and I hadn't been back for a while. So kudos to you guys for one, sticking it out, two, creating and finishing a product of quality. Um, I can only imagine the hardships that came out of that and um, as I said, I was there for a couple of weeks. Just seeing the effects of uh, a town I lived in, of Bendigo, for, I lived there for a couple of decades and uh, it was really, really eye-opening to see the, what had happened to the poor old city. So uh, a lot of people doing it tough, but uh, back to the music. Um, was the, the album title, now it's a lyric from Paper Planes, um, now... Was the original album title going to be that? Or did it just become? Uh, the, there was no real working title to begin with. Um, I had a pretty strong idea with the demos of what I was going, what I wanted to do, and that like started that started years ago before Josh was even in the band. Mm -hmm. um, right. I knew what I wanted to do, but yeah, with some dramas there. Uh, yeah. We just thought it summarised <laughs> feelings of the time and mm. um, just these days just trying to battle your way through the shit that just gets fed to you online mm. and through news, you know, it's not... <laughs> mm. Mainstream news is a bit, bit of a weird thing it is. these days. It is, yeah. It's um the word I always see that fits best is it's bamboozling that always comes to me it's just hitting you and, and everyone's blah, blah. we could do a whole interview just about that alone couldn't we so yeah, so, yeah we, we thought that summed it up you know like mm. everyone's trying to bloody trick you and pull the wool over pull the wool over your eyes at every turn mm. turn so <laughs> turn yeah turn, no turn. yeah and with the lyrical content um like, while we're at it Paper Planes is a fucking earworm. Like, it does not leave my ears. It hasn't since he's released it, but when you put it on the album and it's like, oh, yeah, oh, this, this old chestnut, because that's what it is now. <laughs> but then it, it, fit, like, it fits in the album. Like, as a single, it's great, but it really fits in the album well. And um, it's a yeah. later track, which is good. Um, yeah, I... Just my, I think it's the the real craft is keeping the album cracking along um, is a real art in itself, and I feel that that is the case. That works well with this album um, from start to finish. It's one of those albums where you just put it on and you're kind of like, fuck it, what? I listen to the whole thing. Holy shit! So yeah, having that having that later track, I think really works really really well in my personal opinion. So. Wow. Uh, yeah, that was part of the idea because that had been out for a while. Was I thought it was better to to put put that later on in the piece so people would hear some other stuff. Yeah, you know, or they heard something that they'd be familiar with. Familiar, so it gets stuck in your yeah. head again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Basically, crack on. Yeah, the lyrics, Josh Josh handled all the lyrics. So. Mm. Speak a bit more about what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. Well, one track that does interest me, um, I, like it's just ones that stick out a lot. I'll, I'll do this and I'll throw this in in two ways. Abrax always managed create an emotion in the rhythm, notation, etc. I won't go on too much about that. I'm not a guitarist, but I feel it being a vocalist. Um, feel. Like it's always like that. that although there's pure chaos, it's like this sense of sort of it's almost like hope in the music. You know what I mean? Like we're fighting. It's it's worth it. That's what I. That's the way I would write Abrax music. Now there's lyrics in there in the song Black Wings, uh, and I might misquote this, so pardon me. Um, Black Wings are pulling me down, and then there's another line. It's like Black Wings are tearing. Me. Now that one really got me. Um, in the emotional category. Yeah, what's that song about, Josh? It's just, well, like, really the tone of the album. It's all mental health, depression, struggles. Hmm. And again, like, with the good old diehard Abreact message of it's worth it, there's hope, but you've got to get through that. Hmm. Basically, you know, don't give up. And Black Wings is a particularly darker 
part of our message through that progression of the songs. Yeah. Really, like, it's, yeah, it's pretty heavy. Nice. Nice. There's, um, there's just a, an emotion to your voice that really just, like, it's, it's a scream of desperation almost. It's not desperation, but it's, it's, it's fiending for something, and that really came through on the recording. And I beg anyone who's listened to the album before, like, I'm sure there's a lot of people listen to it a few times now, but really chuck it, your headphones in, do it in different um, ways, in the car, stereo, tape, shit, um, and um, yeah, just sort of experience it, because I find I was getting more sort of um, vibe from different audio systems in my, yeah, I was really getting with the headphones today, I was like, fucking hell, this is, this is starting to move me a lot, a lot more, so I think it's, one of those albums that grows grows on you, but you sort of learn, you sort of become knowledgeable about what you're on about. Like, oh shit, oh fuck, that's that's pretty full on, yeah. <laughs> so there is definitely a certain degree of personal experience mm. through the whole album, which is, I guess, why I can be so in touch with it too. Like that's a mm. that's a genuine delivery. Yeah, there you go. Well, that, that says it all right there. And I think Bo Bo helped with some of that stuff too. He's like, you know. Um, don't scream too hard Yeah. In, in these bits let some of the emotion come out rather than go on absolutely as hard as you can in some, yeah. some bits yeah. which um, <laughs> definitely works in, in songs like that yeah. that's cool yeah sort of keep your lunch down but yeah give it totally, yeah. totally yeah. <laughs> I think I'd recommend that do it highly enough to anyone but yeah. he is just an absolute magician yeah it's it's a thunderous album it's produced really really well it's really well balanced and um you know the bass cuts the drums like your rhythm section chris and aaron like jesus you know there's there's just a, a bit more sexiness going on in the rhythm and and, and uh, they're, they're all right for a couple of blokes <laughs> a couple of a couple of <laughs> a couple of <laughs> old codgers <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh shit no, so no, no. Yeah, Chris definitely had some really cool ideas too when we were yeah tracking mm. and a bit more spice to a few things. Yeah, okay, I have a. He's very, he's very creative like that, like Trust in the K Part One. That kind of yep. You'll probably hate me for saying this, but uh, Ben Shepard style baseline in Trust in the K Part. Yeah. One. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bit different to the, the guitar. <laughs> really brought something in that track. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I like that reference. That works well. Um, um, yeah, the, uh, when I was listening to it in my brother's car, I was just listening to Soundgarden before it. So that's a very, very, very. Uh, I hear that. Yes. <laughs> Even though Chris is going to hate it. <laughs> um, um, that's really cool. Now, on Chris, um, I uh, for those who don't know, I have a personal affiliation with Abreact. I was once in the band. And um, I remember recording the first album, Chris knocked out one song in one take. Did he do that on this album? Uh, this... <laughs> yeah, I think there was a couple where he did, but yeah. we did we did it in sections in with a couple of songs just to mm. try mm. different stuff, because there was a few songs that we hadn't even played yeah. um, together more than twice before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, right. actual... So yeah, some of them had yeah. We all looked like back in the old days, we used to you know pretty much everything had been played live at yeah. least once before we recorded it. But this time around, it's like a good half of it wasn't even, <laughs> yeah. no. wasn't even played live, That's and you know some of it didn't even have finished lyrics until a couple of weeks before Josh had to do it. So we we're always demoing and trying mm. different stuff. Yeah, well. We it's cool how the <laughs> it's cool how the, <laughs> it's cool how the end product came out because it's just so so together. So uh, it's uh, super cool. Now upon upon sorry, you go. I was going to say that was almost the curse of um, having so much time between sessions. Um, well, in a way, I just tried not to think about it. Otherwise, you just rework things a million times I just tried to stay away from it basically Yeah. because we, we knew what we wanted to do and like if we tried stuff it was more in the heat of the moment while we were tracking rather than 
you know, for three months while we were sitting at home doing nothing, mm. you know, trying to make me and things. Mm. Did you did you find that having that extra time made you come up or sort of think out layering on the album at all? Uh, it's just twin guitar, yeah. really, which is the standard. Um, mm. There's not much layering. There's only a couple of songs where there's a little bit of layering, and again, mm. they were just ideas of bows at the time, really. Yeah, you nice. Know, you get to you know, try, try doing something to this, you know, because it's, you know, a bit meat and potatoes sometimes, so yeah. sometimes a little bit of sugar goes a long way. <laughs> Especially on potatoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so on that, um, more about the recording. Now, there's something really, really special um, about this album um, that you guys have footnoted really, really well and really respectfully, and, and thank you. Um, I'll get to that part in a second. Um, uh, the guests on the album. Yeah. Now I'm one of them, which is um, for anyone who it's like an honour for myself. But um, enough about me. Um, having <laughs> having another guy on there as well, another couple of guys on there as well. Talk about that. Uh, well, we because yeah, there's been a few bit of bit of time when we've had different singers and stuff. Uh, you know, the discography is a little bit disjointed in that regard. Um, which, you, you know, I'd, I'd prefer it not to be, but, you know, it is, yeah. it is what it is. Um, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of bring it all together and get the previous vocalists mainly involved mm. um, to put their stamp on it. And Matt, our vocalist before Josh in particular, we really loved his delivery in the second half of Waves. Um, so we thought we'll definitely try and get him in on that, which we did. And um, we thought it was the first line of that section is Remember Me. So we thought it was pretty... That's cool. Pretty funny. <laughs> pretty funny to have him in there. He just comes in and goes, Remember Me. And, yeah, yeah, what's up, motherfuckers? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Remember Me. Yeah. yeah. So that, that was definitely cool. And um, yeah, you good self. No. Uh, yeah. That was definitely something I wanted to do for the same reasons. I just wanted to tie everything together and, um, you know, mm. have it as like a big family almost, so to speak. You know, just because yeah, there's little bits and pieces here and there. I just kind of wanted to bring everything together. Yeah. Um, almost pay respect to, yeah. to the one the before. The homage. Uh, the homage. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was good to get Hugh Johnson in as well, mm. uh, back from Entities to do cello and cello and some piano and all that. Oh, um, tripped out, eh? Yeah, I, I, sent a message to, I sent a message to Trav and just said, oh, Hugh, I just sent him a photo of the credits and he's like, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. 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 But he, he, he's, a, he's a hard person to find, so, you know, he just lays low, so. Yeah. But, Doing his know, cello I, and I, shit. I, 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 Yeah, I bump, I bump into him every day, so we got him in again, so which was good because added a bit of flavour, a bit of mm. piano here and there, um, and a little bit of cello here and there. Mm. Unreal. And uh, and our boy Timmy on the backing vocals. Wow. Yeah. Shit, yeah. Well, yeah, and that was the thing. I thought, well, if I'm getting, if everyone else is on there, <laughs> uh, well, I can't leave Tim out. So yeah. That would be that would be in poor taste. Yeah, it'd be it'd be like shaving one side of your mo. It just would be weird, wouldn't it? Yeah. Or, or you goatee. Oh, yeah. Born in a hoti, half goatee. Uh, <laughs> directly behind you on the wall is a photo of him with that. Yeah. Like behind the laptop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> on my wall? Um, what? <laughs> drums were the very first thing recorded so yeah uh we couldn't really do anything about that and because it wasn't an idea i had to uh, well into it um so we just got him in on the gang vocals yeah excellent excellent what a way what a way to sort of tie up the the very very long existence of 
well not tie up just to put it in a nice bow for now for what the band was and is that's super super cool and uh and as i said it was what's that sorry that was I think it was part of my thinking too, like with coronavirus, yeah. Because we didn't know what was going to happen. I was like, "Well, this is the last thing <laughs> we ever get to, we ever get to do." Like, you know, which it won't be, of course. Now, yeah, now I know that. yeah, At the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring the bring the doom vibe and get everyone on it. Yeah, yeah. The world's going to end, so you know, <laughs> get everything sorted out. <laughs> now, a good a good segue. This is a uh, Anna Corrin segue. This one. Um, now that we've talked about endings, let's talk about beginnings and your beginnings with 1054. Well, do you know what's funny about what you just said? Uh, <laughs> the album wasn't going to be called uh, Endings, Beginnings or something. Right. And Matt was still, still in the <laughs> So you just phrased that in there. Oh, but there yeah, you go. 1054. 10.54 was a very last minute thing. Mm. Um, there are a hardcore uh, slash metal label in Queensland. Um, growing pretty rapidly. Um, mm. I've brought some releases off them over the years. Um, French, a couple of French hardcore bands and stuff. Mm. He's got a band, he's got some, he has bands from all over the world and um, he saw our Honesty video on um, Hardcore Worldwide, who shared our video. And it was only like four days before the album came out. Wow. <laughs> and he's like, oh, how do we, you know, this is great, do you want to work something out? And I said, I would love to. <laughs> uh, bit of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking timing. Timing, yeah. But uh, we worked everything out because we only did a small run of the first uh, batch of CDs, which is only all gone. Nice. Um, so everyone, get your limited edition. They are going fast. Yeah. Fast. Like <laughs> like hot cakes? Yeah, hot cakes. The hottest. The hottest cakes. <laughs> so cardboard uh, gatefold ones. And yeah. um, so he's putting out a dual case version, which was going to be my plan anyway, once the cardboard ones were exhausted. Fuck, now I need to get another one. Shit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, you know, the book is a little bit different, you know, so, you know, the whole package is a little bit different. <laughs> Hey, cool. Yeah, they're all in there. But yeah, Pete, Pete's an awesome dude, and it's, it's really cool to be uh, working with him. He's got some cool bands on there. He does. Like a Brawler from uh, NZ and Eight Count from mm-hmm. Frank. Um, so yeah, he's looking to bolster some local acts, and that's a part of that. Yeah. And 1054, their social presence is really, really cool. I like the way they do things. Um, it's there once you... It's cool. Once you, actu- once you actually follow the page, you fucking see it. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does a lot of stuff. Yeah. So he's... He he's... knows he's doing cool, so, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's it. He's, um, and there's already a couple of cool things in the works uh, with him already. Excellent. Yeah, this, hopefully we'll have those... Um, that new batch of stuff. Nice. This week, and we'll be getting into the 10:54. Fucking cool, cool, cool. So, um, what's the immediate or future plan for? Is there going to be a tour or play some shows? Or I know things are just starting to heat up again, and now everyone's booked out. Venues are all booked out. But have you got anything? <laughs> have you got anything in the works like next fucking 2025 or? <laughs> <laughs> Um, we haven't got a tour booked, but we're going, we've got rehearsals tomorrow night, we're going to work out some things with that, but yeah, the main thing with the album was, in the end I was just seeing a delay, so I just, we just wanted to get it out. Yeah. So, and then we're like, well, we'll get it out, and then we'll worry about all that other shit later. Mm. Um, so yeah, we're playing, playing in Adelaide, Mosh of Origin, which is like, uh, South Australia versus Victorian band, <laughs> That's so cool. I saw down. that. Yeah. They're going down. They're going yeah. bloody crow eaters. They're going down, mate. Yeah, he, he calls a bucket a fucking pail. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My cousins are from uh, there. <laughs> and they called us, you know, the Palmy State. Palmer State, sorry. So. <laughs> the Palmer. I don't know what they call them. So. Yeah, right. 
<laughs> anyway, either way, they're going. That's for that's for sure. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's one more. Uh, there's, so there's us left behind from South Australia, Victoria K from Victoria, and uh, Headball. Yeah, fuck yeah. Hey, there's one more answer to go, and it is spicy. Nice, nice. So it'll be six bands. That's cool. We're also playing at Kill Fest in November. Oh yeah. Just stacked. Mm. A lot of bands. Oh yeah. At Kilmore Jail, so that's going to be rad. <laughs> oh my god, um, take your Ouija board, people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. It's legit. <laughs> So yeah, we're working on the rest of it, so yeah, Sweet. it's all will come on the Yeah, cool, uh, cool. It was just a matter of getting it out there mm. and starting to spread the word. Yeah. Because I didn't want to wait any longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two years, I don't had enough, I said, fuck it, let's get this yeah. thing out. <laughs> and, and the we'll timing... Get, with Luke, get it out and deal with it later. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, you know, content's just as important these days, so... Um, yeah, well done, boys. Um... And the jewel case is going to be ready just in time for Christmas too. So, mate, mate, <laughs> mate, stock. <laughs> yeah, you know, everyone's going to need a bigger stocking. So uh, only on Abriax Band Camp. Exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So the tapes um, and soon bands will be doing pencils uh, for merch because everyone knows how you rewind a tape. When you're a kid from the 80s. So, Abriac pencils soon. Yeah, sure. uh, uh, do it. Do There's it. still time. There's still time. There's still time. There's still, I just There's want, time. I just want, if you could just send me one, it's got to have a rubber on the end. Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to give you a commission. 